Hello friends, and welcome to the second and final part of the series where I'm continuing with this image to try out the new drawing aids and perspective tools that you can now use with the brush tool in Tahoma. But before we start, let me mention that I've added links in the description to each section of this tutorial, and you can also see them from the new timeline view here on YouTube. So you can now skip direct to the parts you want to see. And if you're new here, I'm Darren T, and I make tutorials for Tahoma and OpenTunes, so subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of when I release a new video. And if you missed part one of this series, you can see that by following the card above. And here's the output from last week. And although it might look like a neatly drawn outlined image, it is just a neat sketch, ready to draw over with the final ink line. So as I go through this section, you'll see me making small changes as I go. And this is made easier by having an almost complete sketch to work with. So the general layout is already worked out, so I know where the halfway points are, and the windows are split into three or four identical sized pieces. So I can just go ahead and add the neat ink lines where they look nice without having to measure if they're in the correct place, because I know that they are. And although I've drawn the sketch using the brush tools, I'm still going to use them here to make sure that I'm correctly following the perspective especially as I'll be adding extra lines that I didn't have before. And the new brush line features have been invaluable for drawing this piece. I would never have considered drawing it without them. So I started off by adding a new blank drawing in the same level, and this was so I still had the same vanishing points. Remember, the vanishing points are stored with each level. So let's run through a few of the commands I'm using here. I'm holding the control key to draw my vertical lines and it would be just too easy to try to draw straight lines and line them up by eye or to follow the sketch line from the column below but then at the end it will be easy to see that the vertical lines weren't truly vertical so it's better to use the tools that we've got and the main new feature of the brush tool you see me using is holding the alt key to draw straight lines direct to the vanishing points So here you can see me setting up to add colour and I just use the bucket tool to add blocks of colour to the building and I really like the monochrome look of the original drawing, almost like a pencil drawing, so I kept to using different shades of grey. And then I created a new level to add the shadows into and by using a different level it meant that I could more easily edit the shape of the shadows and also to not have to set up different shades of colour to cover different areas. So I started by creating a block of black and then adjusted the column transparency until it looked the right shade. And this is such a neat feature of both OpenTunes and Tahoma that you can quickly throw down a colour, or in this case solid black, and then adjust the transparency over the whole column. And to make the angle for the shadow, I used the control key again but this currently locks to 45 degree angles, so I drew them at exactly 45 degrees, which was fine for this drawing. However, in the next release of Tahoma, which could be out by the time you see this video, the angles can be locked at 15 degree intervals, so that'll give you much more control and flexibility over them. And adding shadows really was one of the most fun parts of working on this piece, because they really solidify the drawing placing it physically in the world. And they just make it look cool. And from time to time, you'll see me making the ink column semi-transparent, just so that I can see the lines I'm adding for the shadow. Otherwise, with black lines drawn over black lines, it'd be too easy to leave a gap and not be able to fill them. So doing this just made it so much easier and more efficient. So that's the colour and shadows added to the building. And next, we'll take a look at how I added the reflection in the pool, which effects I used and how, and the rest of the colouring of the background and trees. So this next section is where I changed my piece from the original drawing in the book. 
In their drawing, they added a few basic lines to indicate a reflection. Well, with Tahoma and with OpenTunes, you have a whole selection of effects you can use. So first, I copied the drawing of the building and the shadow drawing into another column. And then to ensure that this shadow copy stayed precisely in the right place in front of the building copy, I attached the two columns together in the stage schematic view. And this meant that when I flipped the building and moved it down to the right place, the shadow followed. So now I could just use the animate tool on the building without having to think about a separate column for the shadow. It just worked. So that's how to duplicate it and turn it upside down. But how did I just show the reflection in the water area? Well for that, you just need another column with a filled area to show the drawing within. And then we'll use that mask within a matte effect. And you can use any level type for a mask, but I used a vector level. And this is just so that I can add a filled rectangle and using the control point editor, I can adjust the four corners much easier than trying to draw using one of the raster levels. And the fill can be any color you like, but I just made it obnoxious pink to help me see any gaps between this and the edge of the pool. So once this was drawn, I opened the schematic, viewed it in FX mode, and added a matte in effect. And using the pink vector level mask as the matte, and the flip drawing and shadow columns as the input. But because the matte only has one input, I used an over FX node to group these two columns together, and then I fed the output from the over node into the source of the matte. Then turning the preview on, I could see only the flipped house and shadows that was contained in the vector mask area. And then came the fun part, trying to make the reflection look realistic. And although the pool's water would be fairly static, it's not a mirror. So you need to add some imperfection to the reflection. So to adjust the image, you just chain the effects nodes from the drawing column through to the X sheet. And the first thing I knew that I wanted was a blur so that the reflected lines don't look as crisp. And it was only a subtle blur, so I adjusted the blur value down. And then I wanted to adjust the brightness Again, to add to the lack of clarity that you get in a reflection. And then I spent some time trying to add an effect to give a rippled look to the water. To show that for an outside pool, with there being some wind around, it'll affect the water. So don't be afraid to just throw effects together to see the outcome. You can always delete them if they don't work. But do remember to save regularly. You don't want to lose an effect that you like because you were too keen to look for the next one. In fact, once I've added an effect, I always hit save all. And then if I make too many changes and can't remember what I've changed, I can just reload the scene and not save the bad edits. And using my backup tool, I can always roll back to a previous version if I take it too far. But more on that later. And for all the effects, just have a play with them. Add some that you don't know what they do. Move the sliders round and see how they change things. You never know what you'll find. So I tried a number of different distortion and ripple effects until I settled on this final one. And then I added a tint to the reflected drawing, just a hint that it was reflected in blue water. Then with a small adjustment to the building colours to add more contrast to the piece. And then added this blue colour to the background to see where I'd not added colour to the building. So I painted the rest of the building, which meant that I could add a background layer and not worry about any of it shining through. So to complete the background, first I used a texture brush to add some texture to the road, and then made it lighter so it wasn't so contrasted. And erased the overfill using the polyline mode of the eraser. Then I went on to add the trees and bushes behind the building. And to do that, I just used one of the textured raster brushes, 
painting first with a dark green background colour and a couple of larger greens in front to add some depth to the trees. Now for the sky, I used a linear gradient on a vector level, and I love using these. It's just so easy to add a subtle colour change to an area, which was exactly what I wanted for the sky. And I tried to keep all the colours fairly muted, to not detract away from the building, just to give a subtle bit of colour into the background. Then to finish up, I added a small blur to the trees, just to move them visually more in the background, and also to slightly hide the texture brush that I'd used. And then I added a subtle fill colour to the ground around the pool. And some colour to the water in the pool. So here's the final piece, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Originally I thought I'd just draw using the new brush tool line features to see how well they performed and then probably leave the drawing as just lines with no colour or effects. But as I worked through the piece I just couldn't help but add a little more. So don't forget that if you want to you can download the project pack from my Gumroad site and that contains this final to Homer project so you can see and examine all the levels, columns and effects that I added and a project file for the first two stages, which was the first complete sketch drawing from last week, and the completed Ink and Shadow project from earlier on today. Also, there's three HD images of all three stages. So check out my Gumroad site for that download. And while you're there, maybe take a look at my backup tool for OpenTunes and Tahoma, for storing incremental backups of your project, so you can revert to an older version if you change your mind or to later see the progress of your project, which is what I used to create and store these three projects. So, give it a go yourself. Try out the brush tool line features in Tahoma and add some perspective to your drawings. And that's a Darren T. Have you always wanted to animate but didn't know how to start and software seemed expensive and difficult to use? Well with OpenTunes, it's free, powerful, and once you know how, it's easy to use. And it's my mission to get you animating with it today. Hi, my name's Darren, and I've been teaching OpenTunes for the past three years, showing thousands of students, just like you, how easy it is to animate with, and cutting through the jargon to show that anyone can animate with it. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to animate traditionally using OpenTunes. And the course is designed for students brand new to OpenTunes, as well as those new to animation. So take a look at the free lessons I've offered below, and then why not sign up and join me animating traditionally with OpenTunes.